Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. As you'll see there, the US 30 managed to uh, hit another all-time high there yesterday, uh, only to drift down towards the end of the session. It's been quite volatile across most equities. Uh, as Janet Yellen gave her testimony yesterday, um, some looked at it being quite uh, quite dovish, but she also uh, kind of ties in interest rates as to job growth. So there's a little bit of dollar positivity in there. Equities have uh, responded relatively well to the statement as well. Uh, you throw in the fact that the uh, the Chinese data, um, the CPI inflation data today, um, actually came in quite quite good. So not not stellar, but certainly a little bit above expectations there. So we're currently trading uh, above potential uh, resistance at 17,075, only just uh, as most global markets are trying to claw back some losses that they made later on in the session uh, yesterday. Um, but very volatile across the equity markets. Obviously, we had um, Goldman Sachs and uh, Citibank and JP Morgan now, now having all reported. And it certainly looks to be that the financials are looking quite healthy. So you're seeing some decent gains in Barclays, a little bit of love in Lloyds, uh, but not, not a huge amount. And obviously, Intel uh, reported quite well yesterday as well. Their shares were up 4%. And IBM are doing a deal with Apple as well, um, so there has been a little bit of um, a little bit of positivity out there, even when the markets are already trading at quite a high level. You can just see there the UK 100 has remained quite uh, quite volatile right there, and we are coming up quite close to potential resistance at 6774, or the potential support remains at 6713. Looking at Japan 225. Uh, it looks to be that 15,488 will be the, um, the short-term resistance to break through. We're back inside the symmetrical, uh, asymmetrical triangle, uh, sorry, ascending triangle formation. Um, but really, this is level to look at. And the way that dollar yen has been going uh, recently is slowly creeping up higher there again. So the yen is losing a little bit of strength, which should be helping to support um, Japan 225. In fact, I haven't looked at that dollar yen position. We're coming up quite close to uh, that 21 period SMA. Uh, we're a fair bit away from 101 spot 35. We're still in a bit of a downtrend. That like really we want to be getting above 102 if uh, dollar yen is going to have any hope of breaking out of this kind of slow bleed that it's had for such a long time. So crude oil West Texas has been a real conundrum uh, over the last couple of sessions. Um, just before Yellen's testimony, maybe we're, we're at about 1 p.m. UK time. Uh, Yellen's testimony was at 3 p.m. Um, oil started to uh, to shoot back up again. And you just see that this candle here was staunchly negative. It hit bang on the potential resistance in $99, which I like from a technical analysis perspective. Uh, and uh, closed just below potential resistance. We're having a retest that resistance right now at 100 spot 61. So what I've kind of found out a little bit more about crude oil now, if you, take, if you strip out all the Middle East fundamentals, uh, Ukraine, Iraq, Libya, blah, 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 people are now looking at uh, crude West Texas as a barometer of global uh, kind of growth uh, potential and the fact you know obviously a lot of people a lot of commentators are thinking that the market's a little bit toppy right now usually when people say that there's a slow grind higher for a couple of months but who knows um, but incidentally when you look at crude oil West Texas and you see the prices that we're seeing now on the backdrop of where equity pricing is at the moment um, some may look at crude oil as, a, as an early warning barometer as to you know if there is this uh, ability to have further growth in the future why is crude oil uh, coming down so much and you're talking about you know a decent 10 12 13 percent drop from the high just in june um so you know that's a very interesting story in itself but this candle here is very interesting um from a technical analysis perspective this very very strong hammer formation It'd be interesting to see if crude can get above 100 spot 60. so gold uh not really doing a huge amount, bouncing around about that 1295, um, getting hit that a little bit harder on the back of the Yellen testimony, because that, that has inadvertently helped to support the US dollar because we're tying the interest rate decisions to job growth and job creation in the US has been quite good, even if you strip out all the other uh, economic data that's been coming out. Um, you know, nonetheless, Janet Yellen said that the low interest rates will remain in play for as long as the US markets needs them. Um, and certainly, if you look at euro dollar, which we're looking at in a second, it's you know the dollar is wrestling control from euro right now. Um, this twelve ninety five level is pretty critical for gold, and we're bouncing off that fifty five period SMA as well. So let me look quickly at euro dollar. It's just broken one spot thirty five sixty eight potential support. That's bad news for euro dollar in the short term because it's a technical breakout. Uh, you'd be looking at the next potential support at thirty five twelve. If not, thirty four fifty five is the next longer term potential support and that was a broken resistance all the way back last August. Um, finishing up with GBP USD, 
had an absolutely blinding session yesterday, only to, to actually hit a you know multi-year high. Let's just say a two and a half year high anyway. Uh, sorry, it's probably even further than that. Um, but we got pushed right back down again, and uh, we're struggling to you know make, make fresh fresh inroads there. So. Um, the CPI inflation data from the UK was well beyond expectations, greatly increasing the chance of an interest rate rise this year. Um, but the markets, you know, one spot 71, uh, 80 or one spot 72, in fact, is, is having multiple chances to try and break through it, but is really struggling. So in regards to uh, Chinese data, I should apologize. It was GDP and industrial production, everything slightly ahead of expectations. You know, not amazingly so, but better than expectations as a, as a bonus. Uh, UK wise, we've got employment and jobless claimant rate due today. If you're a cable trader, that's going to be really important. Uh, and you also have credit inventories, which haven't been that important recently, but the way that credit is right now, it'll be worth looking at. Fast forward onto Thursday, uh, you can see you've got a whole bunch of uh, Eurozone CPI that'll be important for Euro dollar. Jobless claims also important for Euro dollar. Uh, and the Philly Fed number, your Euro dollar. Is pretty interesting right now. You know, the fact that we've had this technical break here, uh, this is where a lot of FX traders will be looking. Make sure you keep an eye on the chart form as ever, guys, and make sure you make insights part of your layout. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.